Saving our native birds. I want you to meet Tilly, the bird that visits my garden. Every morning I hear Tilly singing. Sometimes she brings her mates along. Other times it's just herself. Tilly is a tui, one of the many native birds that inhabit Aotearoa. In total, New Zealand has 200 native bird species. But unfortunately, birds like Tilly have been seen less often. One day, instead of Tilly, I saw this in my garden. Meet Peter, a possum. Peter is one of the main reasons why birds like Tilly have been seen less often. Peter is an introduced predator. Every year, introduced predators kill 25 million native birds. Many actions have been taken to combat the harm introduced predators have on the environment, including the use of 1080 poison and traps. But the problem with these methods is that they are unable to fully eradicate introduced predators from New Zealand. Not only that, but they are also incredibly cost ineffective. Every year, New Zealand spends $135 million on predation control. But you're probably thinking, why should I or anyone else bother saving these native birds? Well, you might have noticed that New Zealand is surrounded by the beautiful ocean. It means we're an island and have been since 85 million years ago. Being an island has meant that our native bird species have evolved much more differently than any other birds found in this world. If we don't protect them, they could all gradually disappear. Forever. Not only that, but native birds play important roles in maintaining New Zealand's ecosystem. Some native birds are important pollinators of plants. Without these native birds, the plants they pollinate can also disappear, and before you know it, the beautiful nature Aotearoa is known for will be no more. If you're more of an indoor person, this probably doesn't affect you, but it will. Without these beautiful landscapes, tourists will be no longer attracted, affecting our tourism industry severely. Besides these harms, Introduced predators also harm industries like farming and agriculture. Possums alone can ruin crops and carry bovine tuberculosis disease, which can damage goods like meat and dairy, important exports for New Zealand. This can waste up to $35 million for farmers every year. So with all these harms introduced predators have on New Zealand, as well as predation control being ineffective, what can we do? Sometimes to solve a big problem, all you need is a small solution. Something as small as our genes. Gene editing using drive alleles is the perfect solution to this problem. A drive allele is an allele that is composed of both CRISPR components and the gene drive. To have a better understanding, let's take a look at what these things are separately first. CRISPR-Cas9 is a biological tool which can be used to edit sections of DNA. It was originally found in the immune system of bacteria, where it helped protect bacteria from different viruses. When a virus was found to be attacking the bacteria, CRISPR will copy a section of its DNA. This section of DNA would then convert itself into something called guide RNA and store it for later use. When the virus was found to be attacking the bacteria again, guide RNA now has the ability to identify this virus due to the DNA that was copied before. Guide RNA will then guide Cas9 and enzyme to find location with the same repeating DNA. Guide RNA will then bind to the DNA of the virus, allowing Cas9 to act as a pair of scissors and cut the DNA at this point. Once the DNA is cut, 
the virus is basically destroyed as a gene can no longer work. CRISPR-Cas9 can be used not just by itself, but with the help of gene drives. A gene drive is a genetic mechanism that increases the likelihood of a particular gene being inherited over another by the offspring. This allows a specific trait to be spread through a population faster than normal. With the combination of both these tools, this drive allele is created. But how does it work and how can it be used to save native birds like Tilly? To help explain, I'll use Peter and another special guest, Polly, Peter's wife, to help explain. In possums and many other animals, there is this gene called the SRY gene. The SRY gene helps determine the gender. If it's present, the offspring will most likely be male. We can combine the SRY gene to the drive allele and insert it into Polly's egg cell. When Polly mates with Peter, our offspring will be produced with chromosomes from both the mother and the father. Guide RNA found on the mother's chromosome will then guide Cas9 to the exact same gene site on the father's chromosome, cutting that piece of DNA at that point. This piece of DNA would then repair itself through a process called homology direct repair, where it takes advantage of the drive allele and uses it as a template to repair itself. This means the drive allele has been now be copied to the other chromosome of the offspring. As both chromosomes now contain the drive allele, the offspring will most definitely inherit this drive allele, leading to the new possum being produced being most likely male. If only males are produced in a population, the population will disappear eventually due to the lack of females. If we place this drive allele into introduced predators, they can all gradually disappear. How exactly can this be implemented though? I'll use possums as the main example again. Firstly, a drive allele will have to be produced for the offspring correctly. This could take up to two to three years to develop, and then another two years will be needed to conduct tests in labs. Once this carrier possum is produced, a small trial will be conducted, taking another several years. Carrier possums will be released to a small island where native birds already harm species. So, when we release this carrier possum, scientists will have a better idea of how long the overall process could take and what effects it has on the native birds which are being destroyed by these introduced predators. But obviously, with every idea, there are problems and limitations. One limitation is the amount of research required. Gene editing is a bit uncertain at the moment, and we don't know a lot about the genetics of introduced species. A lot of research would have to be done to make sure we produce the drive allele correctly. Another limitation is the amount of communication required for this process to continue. Gene editing could release drive alleles, and these drive alleles can easily spread through a population, which could possibly damage ecosystems overseas if exploited. Some introduced predators play crucial roles in other ecosystems overseas, so if they disappear, that would greatly damage the environment. This is why agreements will have to be settled on both a national and international scale to make sure we don't damage any environments. And obviously with every problem and every solution, the cost is a major factor. A 50 year scheme could cost approximately 9 billion New Zealand dollars, which is a lot of government spending. But to be fair, if you think about the millions already spent on predation control, this is not much of a loss. Another important factor to consider is the vision, Matauranga. Matauranga is defined as a body of knowledge, values, experience and philosophy of Māori. Matauranga helps protect the environment, 
so gene editing must be implemented with principles of good practice for Matauranga to ensure we benefit New Zealand as much as possible. Matauranga can be achieved through several ways. One of them is discussions. Our Māori whānau must be well educated about the implications of gene editing to make sure we gain insight into their most realistic perspective. Another way of doing so is by making sure Māori are involved as key decision makers throughout the entire process. Their cultural and scientific expertise is incredibly valuable, so making sure their involvement will only benefit New Zealand. For example, Māori can be key primary Matauranga experts to help guide scientists throughout the entire long process. So if we consider all these limitations and factors, what does it mean for New Zealand? Well, the benefits for New Zealand will be immense. Firstly, New Zealand will have a better environment. Gene editing is obviously more effective as it can fully eradicate introduced predators. This can mean less introduced predators will lead to an increase in native bird species. An increase in native bird species can mean an increase in the native plants they pollinate, benefiting our landscapes. Consequently, New Zealand will have a better economy. If our landscapes are protected, this can guarantee that a continual flow of tourists would come to New Zealand, providing stable jobs to the tourism industry. Major exports like meat and dairy would also be protected from predator damage. And obviously, there is less spending on ineffective predator control. Gene editing is more cost efficient in the long term as once predators are fully eradicated, spending on this area would be no longer necessary. So, the benefits of gene editing for New Zealand is immense. But, most importantly, native birds like Tilly will be protected far more than what's happening right now. And... Hopefully, Tilly might come back, bringing more from mates, singing much louder than before. Thank you.